Okay. Right now it is currently. Oh gosh. Twelve nineteen. Oh, can you even see that? Twelve nineteen. So we are nineteen minutes into twenty seventeen. And I think this year is gonna be the best of my entire life. I actually go to college this year. Or at least I hope I go to college. I just got into Yale. <laughs> Today the day is the September 8th, <laughs> the 8th of September, 2020. Today is Sunday, January 28th, 2024. And welcome back to my little corner of the internet, to my little corner of the podcast galaxy, the universe. Today, I wanted to, to have kind of a, a thoughtful introspection i've been feeling very nostalgic today and also very distracted i feel like i keep getting very easily distracted pero todo es parte del show and one of the things i wanted to talk about i posted something on tiktok and instagram and i was looking through old pictures of me from like 2020, 2021, and I look so different. I feel like I have become a different person in the last year, especially, maybe in the last, I don't know, year and a half, two years. And this is for a lot of different reasons. And I think one of the main things, which this is gonna sound really weird to say, but I feel like I released so many expectations of myself and I also put in more expectations for myself, which doesn't make any sense. I know, I know that that doesn't make any sense. But what I mean by that is I think when I was in college, especially in my, my last year of college, I was not doing well. And that to say the least, to say the least of that situation. I was in probably one of the worst mental spaces I have ever been in, in my entire life. I get a lot of questions about how I started writing poetry. To be completely, completely honest with you guys, I, my mental health was so bad that that was my last resort. I said, I don't feel like I have anyone to talk to, which, might not have been true right in that moment i just felt very alone but there were people that could have helped me if i had reached out but i didn't feel like i could reach out which i think is you know also a topic of discussion which is very important that oftentimes when we get into this really toxic pattern with anxiety we feel as though nobody could ever relate to us nobody could ever understand us nobody would ever want to understand us nobody could ever love us and it's just this panic spiral that ends up with us hitting rock bottom and feeling like we will never get out. And I've been there so many times of just spiraling my brain until it's so tangled that I can't even see the sky. I can't even fathom a, a time where I'm gonna be healed from it. When I started writing, I was writing love poems for someone that I didn't think existed. I was writing things as if I had met the love of my life as if I had met my future husband and everything was amazing and my life was amazing and I was so happy and my skin was glowing and my hair was beautiful and it was... I was writing that when it didn't exist. When I did not feel that I could crawl out of the hole that I had put myself in. And I do feel that in part it was because of my own actions. Of I noticed that I was getting to a place where... My anxiety was really bad. My mental health was really bad. I wasn't taking the time to, to talk to anyone. I wasn't taking the time to take care of myself. I wasn't drinking enough water. I wasn't eating healthy. I wasn't exercising. I wasn't sleeping. I, I saw that. I knew that that was all happening. And I, in that moment, I had to let it happen. I let it happen because I didn't feel as though I could stop it. It, it felt out of my control in that moment. If I wanted to, I really wanted to, but I couldn't. And I could come up with a million excuses as to why I couldn't. I was too busy. I was too stressed. There was too many exams. 
there was no money, there was this, there, I could come up with a million excuses. And a lot of them were valid. A lot of them, you know, if you're studying for a really hard exam, you might not be able to get a full night's of sleep. And that's just kind of the reality of the situation. But so when I was writing, I wrote about this version of myself that I didn't know could exist. Honestly, I was like, yeah, like I, I could see myself being this happy person, that this balanced person that writes and, you know, has these amazing friends and has this amazing relationship and all of this. Even when it wasn't true. And now what's really crazy is I 100% do believe in manifestation and I've already recorded a podcast on that. So if you want to listen to that, like go go ahead and listen to that. But I manifested so many different aspects of my life. And that's something that I feel was incredibly healing to me then that I have almost stopped doing now, which is really weird to say, because when I was really going through it, that's when I was writing in my journal the most. That's when I was make manifesting the most. And I was making these lists, these manifestation lists. And I would just kind of go down and be like, oh, and I would write everything in the present tense of like, oh, I have like 5,000 followers on Instagram, whatever, of just like, I say whatever in the sense of like, I don't remember exactly what I put, but it was like stuff like that. And I remember later on, I had looked at what I wrote and, you know, it said, like, for example, hit 5,000 followers on TikTok. Cause I think I was like at a hundred or 200 when I wrote that. When I went back and looked at what I had written, I think I was already at 500,000. And I was like, wow, dude, okay, way to sell yourself short. First of all, like you could have wished for so much more. And it's, it's crazy because I feel like even when I'm manifesting, even when I am dreaming, I set these limits for myself. And I think in part it is because of imposter syndrome of I don't want to dream outside of this box that I've created, outside of this, these limits that I've placed for myself, because why would I be deserving of more than this? Like, this is already asking for too much. And it's not. It's like dead ass asking for the bare minimum. And I'm like, no, 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 too much. That's too much. And this is what I mean in the sense that I released so many expectations of myself because I was like, I don't expect you to be one, anything more than you are. I gave myself that space. I said, Celia, if this is all you can give me right now, I love that version of her. I will appreciate her. I will take care of her. And if this is all you can give me right now, if this is all that we can be, that's amazing and that's okay. And thank you for that. I really appreciate your presence. And in doing that and allowing myself the space to just be, to not constantly, you know, hate myself for being that person, I developed a much healthier relationship with myself. I saw this comment today that was really sweet. That was like, oh, I hope to love myself um, one day the same way that Celia loves herself or like as much as Celia loves herself, which is crazy because I, if you had told, if I had seen that comment like two, three, four years ago, I was like, bro, I hate to break it to you, <laughs> but I am faking it. This is fake confidence versus now I'm like, no, yeah, I really, I love myself. And I think we're taught so often that that is a bad thing to say and that's a bad thing to feel and that it's narcissistic and selfish and i think people forget that love is so much more than you know liking the way someone physically looks that's a part of it right like sure attraction that's a part of it but when i say i love myself i mean i have seen myself in my absolute worst moments i've i've been there when she's you know on the floor sick not wanting to get up looking so bad and i am there for her when nobody else is and i support her and i i pull her back up and i give her a little pep talk and i say hey you feel really shitty right now you feel really bad right now and i give her that space and I say, that's okay. Feel the way you need to feel. Your feelings are incredibly valid. And I would feel that way too if I was going through it, which like I am also going through it because I'm you. But I almost see myself from this like third point of view, this third party perspective. And then I, I pull myself back in and I say, Celia, I'm here for you. I got you. 
I got you. And to give an example of this too, you know, ever since I got food poisoning, I've, I, you know, I was very validly so afraid to start eating normally again because I was like, no, I've been eating like dry cereal and saltines the whole week because I'm so afraid of getting sick. And so sometimes like when I when I did kind of start transitioning into eating more normal food, I started to feel a little nauseous sometimes. And I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, like I don't want to get sick. And I would literally grab my thigh and I would just kind of like start moving my hand in little circles of just like, you know, sobandome. I don't, how do you say that in English? Like not petting myself, but I would just kind of like be soothing myself of just like, oh yeah, like you're okay, you're okay. And I would like pat my knee and I'd be like, you're okay, like everything's okay. And it seems so silly to say, right? Of like, oh my God, girl, like, come on. But I'm serious, like it makes such a huge difference. And there have been moments where I will literally grab both of my hands and with my thumbs, I'll just kind of like start like rubbing on the other thumb. You know, like when people are like, oh yeah, like he held my hand and then he was like, you know, holding my thumb or whatever. That seems so weird to explain, but you know what I mean, right? Of like, you're holding your hands and I will hold my own hand. Like when I'm really, really nervous or really scared or really stressed, that's what I will do. And it makes me feel so much better because I'm like, damn, I got this. I got my back. I always have my own back. Like, and while that is very important to, to say, and while I do think it's very important to love yourself, I think it's so important as well to know that it's incredibly okay to want somebody else to love you too. And it's so valid. And I think we're taught that if we have that feeling of, oh, you know, I, I kind of wish I did have a boyfriend or I kind of do wish I had somebody, like a partner to be there with me. We're taught that that's weak for some reason, which I'm like, why? Like literally it's human nature to want to have somebody else. And it doesn't have to be a partner. It doesn't have to be, you know, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, like, it can literally just be a friend. Like we are taught that social connection is important, which I think is so crazy now the way that society has kind of, I don't know, changed the way that connection is viewed and the way that connection is appreciated. Because yes, now we have the whole social media aspect of it, of we can be so in touch with so many different people without ever actually talking to them, right? Like you could see somebody's post from somebody that you went to middle school with like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and know everything about their lives and never talk to them, which is so crazy because before you would have to talk to someone or somebody would have to tell you directly to know what was happening to them. And I think that's really kind of skewed our way of thinking, which not to say social media is horrible. I think social media has a lot of really wonderful aspects of it. Anyways, back to the, the healing. I don't know, people are always like, your first love really like leaves an impression on you. And I feel like my first love was myself. And I don't mean that to sound like, you know, egotistical or like, oh, like I'm obsessed with myself. I think because I had such a bad relationship with myself and with my sense of self-worth, that is what has stuck around with me. And that is what every day I try to heal and try to leave space for. And yeah. I don't know if I've ever heard anyone say it like that. I've never thought about it like that until now. I'm excited to see which dreams I haven't even imagined yet that will come true. I'll leave you with that.